Welcome to Nancy's Notions Wardrobe Builder. I'm Joy Mahone and you are in for a special treat in this July edition because we are beginning a short series on understanding the classic tailored shirt. Now we're gonna be focusing on men's wear, but just know with a few modifications, you can change your shirt from a man's shirt into a woman's shirt. We are going to study all aspects of creating the tailored shirt from the tailored collar, the button placement, how to do a simple rolled hem, and the placket and shirt cuff. You're in for a great time as we study these areas of sewing. Well, we're gonna go ahead and make sure you like and subscribe so that you're notified anytime one of the new videos is available and let's get started. Well, welcome to lesson three in our three-part series in Wardrobe Builder on creating the classic tailored shirt. You might be wondering what I'm doing here. Well, I'm actually taking a sleeve apart. Now, when I was in high school and in college, I worked for a tailor and we altered and sewed all kinds of tailored garments, including the classic shirt. And my first experience in shirt sewing was actually taking ready-to-wear shirts apart. And I can tell you that that was a phenomenal exercise in understanding how shirts go together because quite often we might shorten a shirt sleeve by taking off the cuff and then putting that cuff back on the shirt only a little higher in order to shorten it. And so I really got a lot of experience in understanding how the plackets go on or how a collar is attached. So a great exercise for you in learning and mastering these techniques is just go to a resale store and purchase some old shirts, take a sewing blade and pop the cuffs off, pop the placket off and sew them right back on. You will be, get very fluid in how you do these order of operations. Well, in this lesson, we are gonna finish our shirt by approaching the sleeve and the placket and the hem, of course, and you will have a great garment to top off your wardrobe. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Well, we are ready to create what is often called the house or maybe the placket of the sleeve. Now, there are a couple things that we wanna pay attention to on our sleeve pattern before we do this. Now, I have a very fine line marking the opening for the placket. You won't be able to see that here. And I didn't want a lot of show through on my final garment, so I didn't use excessive uh, chalk marking, but there's a line on there. And we've mentioned before that in shirt sewing, the goal is to use really precise markings. And that really ensures that all the components and pieces that we make are, well, exactly as I said, precise and we have that precision. That's really what is gonna make or break your shirt. So I've got a nice, straight, very crisp and thin line. We're gonna do some stay stitching around that in just a moment. You want to make sure on your shirt that you do a mirror image so that you end up with a left and a right sleeve. That is a common mistake that I hear from sewers that they accidentally make two left sleeves or they put the placket it the same way on both. And you really want a, a mirror image so that it's distinctively different from left to right. And another little tip is that sometimes when we're doing this placket, you'll want to use very small stitches. Now I'm going to talk a little more about that here in just a moment. So what I'm going to do is set these little pieces aside and I am going to stitch right up next to this opening about a quarter of an inch on either side of my chalk line. Now, when I get to the very top of this line, I'm gonna to come to a point and then I'm going to rotate my fabric and then I'm gonna kind of arc back out and then stitch down the other side. Some sleeve patterns will have you stitch up 
and take a stitch over one or two stitches and then come back down. That's not incorrect. Just know that you want to do whatever your pattern calls for. And in this case, it's just going to come right to a point. Now, now that I have this stay stitch, I'm going to cut right up to the edge of that point. And again, if you have a pattern that has you go straight and then stitch over and come down, what you're going to do is cut to the corners. And we've seen that before in Wardrobe Builder. We've seen that in our three-quarter zipper opening on our fashion hoodie. And, and it's really the same process. What happens is you're cutting into a garment, and there's no continuing seam. And so you need some way to kind of finish this edge so that it looks aesthetically pleasing. And it's also something that we've seen in our welt pocket when you cut come to a point and then you angle your scissors to the point and then it just creates a beautiful folded opening. All right, well, I wanted to share that. That'll give you some, uh, uh, a little bit of a scavenger hunt there. You can go check that out on those other videos. All right, well, we're gonna, I think what I'm gonna do is just continue this one and then I'm gonna repeat and do my opposite side. Okay, so we're in the gentleman's wardrobe book and if you're following the guidelines, you're going to cut two strips of fabric measuring an inch and a quarter by five inches. This will be the uh, one edge of the placket. Now, we're gonna flip our garment over. All right, so now we're on the wrong side of the garment. And what we are going to do is we are going to place the strip overlapping the right side of the opening. This is also the opening that is closer to the edge. And this is where you're either gonna end up with two left sleeves or two right sleeve plackets. So pay close attention to that. I'm gonna put a couple pins in there just to anchor it. And I, I, you guys know I oftentimes don't typically put a ton of pins in garments. Uh, so in my own sewing, it's pretty easy for me to sew without. But I wanna point out that sometimes in the shifting of our fabric, Putting a pin there is a really good visual reference. Whether you need it or not, it also anchors this piece. So if you get up and walk away, you don't accidentally come back and then stitch it to the wrong area. So just a little tip there. I'm gonna flip my fabric around and stitch about a quarter of an inch from the edge. And my machine has a 2.5 uh, millimeter stitch length. I may, when I get to the tip up here, lower it to about a 2.0, just to ensure that it's really going to anchor right to the top of the placket. Okay, so this is what this looks like. And again, I'll, I'll repeat myself. Make sure when you do the other side that you have a mirror image. All right, now we're gonna turn this strip to the outside or the right side, the pretty side of the fabric, and we're gonna stitch it in place. Now you can go to your iron and press that down. But for right now, I'm just gonna roll that under. We'll, we'll flip this back over and kind of reposition our, our fabric here. But the idea is that we are gonna flip this around. There we go. And then I'm just gonna hold it in place here so you'll see. So we're flipping that to the right side and then we're gonna stitch in place. We're gonna stitch right down that folded edge and that is gonna be the one side of our placket opening. The next part is going to be the house, uh, the part that has the beautiful top stitching on it. So let me run to the iron. I'm gonna press that, top stitch that down, and then we're gonna finish off the other side. And I think you'll see how easy that is. Okay, well we have our left or right side of the placket done. We're gonna complete it with what I think is the more artsy side of the placket, the housing. And some patterns will have a peak 
So it kind of looks like a rooftop in this area. This one just has a square with some top stitching in it. You can, of course, monogram that, do some decorative stitching. So however you choose to embellish that, some patterns will have a button hole and a button stitched in there and then the overlap. But I'm gonna show you how easy it is to create one of these uh, in the fashion that we're doing here with the two strips of fabric. All right, well, what we're gonna do, well, he, let's take a look at where our garment is right now. And this still looks fairly raw. We've got the binding on one side, but then we've got this kind of raw edge and um, nothing really fancy here at the top. And that housing is going to cover that. Well, what we wanna do is, according to our gentleman's wardrobe book, they have a pattern piece that's cut two and a quarter of an inches wide by five and three quarters. Uh, that's what this piece is right here. Here. Now I've already gone and folded one edge under and then folded the top edge under as well. So you'll see um, in your instructions, if you follow it step by step in the book, they'll just have you fold that under and press it in a few steps after. But I kind of like it before. What happens is we're going to put this piece right sides together. Um, right to wrong sides together, I should say, on the back. And we're going to stitch uh, right up on top of our stay stitching. And we're going to stop right at that point. Then what we're going to do is we're going to press our seam allowance. And then we're going to rock this out to the front. All right. And then the seam allowance is pressed one direction. And then simply what we're going to do is fold this in half. And it's going to cover the seam allowance. You're going to top stitch up one side and then do your decorative stitching however you choose to do an X stripes, again, monogramming, whatever you want to do. So I like to kind of walk through these steps because they can seem difficult if you're a new sewer or you've never done a, a shirt before, but really, even if you're a new sewer, I 100% believe that you can create this. So let's turn this upside down and we're gonna just lay this piece, again, right side of the placket housing to the back or the wrong side of the fabric. And on this fabric, it's not real obvious what's the front and back, so it's probably a little difficult for you to see. But on your fabric, you may have a distinctive front and back. So again, just make sure that the right side of the placket is laying on the back or the wrong side. And for this particular one, I don't even pin this. It's gonna lay right here. Um, what I'm gonna do is make sure that I put my needle down and it's a quarter of an inch from the edge. And I'm just able, as I'm sewing, I can kind of lift this up if needed and I can kind of go a few stitches, get it started there. And then I can stitch a couple and just make sure that I'm not too far out or too far in from that stay stitching. The nice thing too about stitching this direction is that I can see exactly, I'm across from where I stopped on the other side. And it's kind of just a subtle, tiny thing. You really won't be able to see that real clear here, um, but you can see that on your own machine. Now, if I take this out, and hold it, you'll be able to see that I was able to stop right across from the other stitching. So we're gonna go to the iron and we're gonna press that toward the front and then we're gonna wrap this around. All right, now I did take a few moments at the iron to really make sure that this was pressed nicely. So after I turned this to the front side, I made sure that the seam allowance was pressed toward the inside. And remember, we've got the, the long edge and the top short edge folded over. And then I just folded that in half and pressed that really, really well at the iron. So now I can just top stitch right down there uh, and then do my decorative stitching. So don't skip the, the precision and really press pressing this nicely before you stitch it. And then you're not gonna have any issues with ripples, lumps, and bumps.
And of course, you can use the preset stitches in your machine. You can use your laser beams. You can preset going forward, backwards, and that sort of thing. But that gives you your beautiful placket opening. Well, the last step on the sleeve before we sew the side seams and add the cuff is to just simply fold over the pleat on the markings and baste across the bottom. Well, after you have placed a couple rows of gathering or basting stitches around the cap of the top of the sleeve, we're gonna head over to the cutting table and we are gonna pin the sleeve right sides together to the arm opening on the shirt. We are going to match the top of the sleeve. We have our very obvious double notches, which indicate the back of the sleeve. And then of course the single notch, which indicates the front of the sleeve. So make sure that you match your sleeve so that the correct sleeve is on the left and the right side. It'll be a mirror image and we're going to pin those and then come back to the machine and stitch all the way across the top of the sleeve. Now we want to remember that the sleeve does feature a flat felled seam. So once we have that pinned, we'll see what that looks like. We're going to stitch the seam. Then I'm going to hop over to my serger and serge across the, the top edge. Then we can press it to the front and flat feld that seam if you choose to do that. So really a couple steps for attaching the sleeve, but nothing that we've never seen before in Wardrobe Builder. So let's get this attached. Then we'll add the cuff and we're so close to being done with our beautiful gentleman's wardrobe shirt. All right, well, we have our sleeve pinned into the arm opening. Now, a couple of thoughts on pinning the sleeve cap. Um, so if you've never sewn a shirt before or you're working with a pattern you've never sewn before, I always tell my students, or if you're a beginner as well, pin the sleeve cap in there first before you try to do any of the, like just holding it manually or flipping it over and using the feed dogs. Uh, it just gives you a feel for where the sleeve should line up and how it should fit into the arm's eye. And so you can see it as you're molding that sleeve in there with the pins and as you're distributing any ease or fullness that may or may not be in your pattern. Some sleeve patterns have a good amount of ease, which uh, there are some patterns it's a little difficult to just ease all of that in with your machine because they've built in a couple inches. I've seen that. I usually try to remove some of that fullness from the pattern. Uh, this is a great one. It just has a nice uh, average amount of ease. It's about an inch. It distributes beautifully into the cap of the sleeve. So once you've sewn a pattern and you like the pattern and you're going to make it over and over again, what you can do is you can put markings, a few more markings on the sleeve cap and then the body of the garment so you know where they match up. And then what you can do is you can use use maybe three or four pins and then you can utilize the stretch and the feed dogs in your machine to help ease and gather that in there. And then for my advanced sewers or those that are ready to really, you know, explore, you can really delve into the techniques and methods that are all about speed sewing and efficiency, kind of those factory sewing methods. Um, and those are wonderful, but you, the in order to make those work, you have to have a pattern that 
is balanced from the sleeve to the arm design, you know that they go together and they go together well. And so sometimes a little fitting on our on our end to make sure that the pattern is the way we want it to be, um, then will allow us to grow our skills into some of those other techniques. And that's what sewing is all about. It's going from beginning skills to growing, you become faster, and then you can again try some of those advanced techniques which I really believe anybody can do. So we're just building. All right, well, we've got our seam allowance here. I am going to stitch around the uh, cap of the sleeve on both sides, run to my serger, serge the, uh, that off, press it, and then come back and flat fell from the top side. And then we're gonna just shoot right down the, the side seam and we'll be ready to add our cuff. And as I take these pins out, we just kind of did our basic pinning the sleeve and stitching it here. And really whatever method you choose to join your sleeve to the body of your garment, it's really just a few seconds to go from one side to the other. So find what you're comfortable with and go with that. All right, whoops, one more pin. Let's head to the serger. Well, as I've mentioned, there are many ways to assemble a shirt and many order of operations and patterns are different from pattern to pattern guide. So um, as I mentioned, I ran to my serger and did a quarter of an inch serging around the arm's eye after I stitched right sides together. And I'm gonna flat fill or top stitch from the top of the shirt. Some patterns and some instructions will guide you to fold the edge of the seam allowance over and then you're basically gonna top stitch it from the inside of the garment and that's an appropriate finish as well. Uh, some patterns will have you do a single row of stitching, others may have double or even a triple row of stitching for a decorative effect. So you choose what order and what option you would like. I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch around here. I do think that some versions look a little bit cleaner and a little more dressy based on the fabric that you're using. So you can use that as a guide as well. If you want something a little dressier and you want a little more polished and a little bit more control as to how it looks on the outside, then I like to stitch from the outside. But if you want a little more of a casual, if you have like some denim fabric or things like that, you can stitch from the inside and then it gives you a little more of a casual, kind of a, maybe not Western, but you know how some Western shirts really have uh, kind of that casual look to them. That's kind of what you might get with some of those finishes. And of course, based on the decorative thread that you may or may not use. So all of those things are choices that you get to do as a designer.
right, well, we're so close. We're gonna go ahead and stitch uh, down the sleeve to the underarm and down to the hem. I do wanna point out that we kind of have mentioned this earlier. Some patterns will have you stitch the underarm seam of the sleeve first, and then you will attach the sleeve by putting the tube into the body of the garment with the side seams already stitched. Uh, it's just an alternate uh, way of doing that. If you are assembling a pattern in that fashion, you will do the cuff and add all of these details uh, and the sleeve will in essence be done before you attach it to the body of the garment. But here we're just gonna run from top to bottom. It will allow us to flat fell the seam if you choose to do that on the side and underarm. All right, well, the cuff is almost done for us because we've created a beautiful house and placket. So the cuff is created kind of similar to what we did with the collar. So you're going to have the cuff piece and then you're going to have the facing piece. The, the outer cuff piece, you're going to apply some fusible interfacing, apply that according to your manufacturer's instructions and then the facing piece will not have an interfacing on that. And then what we are going to do is we are going to match right sides together on the facing and the sleeve. And if you look real close, you'll see that we have one edge turned under five eighths of an inch. So we're going to go ahead and start over here where the, the cup is folded under and we're going to stitch around. Now, unlike the collar, which has an acute angle and it's not quite a right angle or 90 degrees, your cuff is a 90 degree angle. And so we don't need to do a diagonal stitch across the point because the 90 degree will allow it to absorb the excess fabric. And we'll trim it, of course. So we'll take our scissors and we will just clip off, making sure that we're not running into the stitches, but we're gonna trim a good amount because this pattern does have the wider 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. We're gonna trim across the top and the other side and turn it right side out and give it a nice press. And then we're ready to attach this to the actual uh, opening of the sleeve. And we're gonna do that here. All right, so we are going to attach the facing edge right sides together. So the right side of the facing is, is here. And we're gonna attach that to the inside of the cuff or basically the wrong side. So that is going to allow us to join these edges and it's already pressed under, so they match beautifully. We'll grab some pins here. And again, this is one of those areas, and I know that this cuff is gonna fit in here beautifully. Uh, and part of the, the cutting out the pattern is that I made sure when I cut the pattern that I was really precise so that I didn't make the cuff any more wide or long or any more narrow than the pattern calls for so that it nests in there beautifully. So we're just gonna put some pins here though so you can see that. 
And again, as you get comfortable, you may or may not need to pin. Sometimes I'll just put one pin in at one end to get it started so it doesn't shift, and then I'll just stitch right around. But let's continue, and we're gonna basically insert the cuff kind of into the sleeve. And I'll pin the other side. You can use applique pins. It is kind of important to really make sure, and it's a small area, but to really make sure that the edge of the cuff matches with the edge of the placket facing. Um, it's not gonna ruin it if there's just a scant amount that they're not matching up, but obviously if you can make that match, then it's just gonna turn under and fit beautifully. But here we go, we'll put one more pin in here so you can see that. And we're gonna go ahead and stitch. Now it's not gonna lay flat because we're going in a circle. So we wanna be careful that we're not catching anything on the underside of the, the seam as we're stitching it. So I'm gonna rotate everything and make sure that I have about a couple inches where it's nice and flat. I'm gonna line the needle up, making sure that I'm not catching where the cuff is folded under. So I'm gonna kind of make sure that that facing piece is kind of out of the way and that and we're only going to have about two inches or so where it's going to lay nice and flat so I'm going to stitch that then rotate my fabric I'm going to feel underneath to make sure that it's flat and then I'm just going to keep doing that in a circular fashion it's probably second nature for a lot of you but if you ever have trouble lining these types of things up or you're getting puckers on the back, uh, it's probably that you're not you know, paying attention to uh, this area right here being flat. And, and it's kind of a mannerism that I've developed and you probably see me do it. Sometimes I just kind of press the seam down or I feel it. I'm feeling with this hand right here before it gets up underneath the needle. And there I'm gonna stop and see this part right here isn't flat, it just looks like uh, a bunch to you. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and grab it and I'm gonna pull it kind of taut, press that out of the way and make that nice and flat. Then I feel confident removing that last pin. And as I come to the other side, I'm just making sure that I'm not stitching over top the overlap. I'm not catching anything. Let's remove our pins and look at that. So it should be nice and flat. We're gonna rotate around nice and flat. And then I'm gonna check on the back side, which looks great. Now we can press the seam allowance toward the front. And then we're gonna just tuck the seam allowance inside that folded edge and it's already pressed under and then we're gonna put a couple pins there and we'll top stitch around the cuff. So we have that beautiful top stitching on there and we can put an additional row if we choose to do that. 
But the next thing we're ready to do is attach some buttons and button holes to our cuff uh, and our cuff placket if we choose to, and then button and button holes down the front of our shirt based on where our button placement is and where how many buttons we want and the size of them. So we'll get that done. Put a hem on there and we have made a beautiful wardrobe builder gentleman's wardrobe shirt. Well, we're ready to make our buttonholes and I am going to run a piece of sample fabric through my machine and test the buttonhole that I am going to choose, which will just be a regular narrow squared buttonhole. And I've got that set up on my machine. Beautiful. All right, well, I am using a contrasting thread and a little bit darker button, which I think um, it's not sewn there, so I'll have to hold it. I think makes a really fun contrast for this fabric. Uh, the buttonhole looks great and the size is perfect. So I am using, again, the extra long magic pins and I use these to mark button placement and it just eliminates having to baste and hand stitch. I can just put a little pin in there because they're nice and long. I can't emphasize the fact that I love that they're so long and they've got the little gripper. So I have the pin on my fabric and it's just woven through the fabric in the spot that's centered and that's the starting point for my buttonhole to go backwards. So I'm gonna start at the top, I'll stitch up one buttonhole, and then I'll move down and I'll stitch another one and move all the way down. And, uh, and it's also easy to measure with my hem gauge. I can just measure the equal distance. Uh, I have a, one of those accordion pattern drafting markers for buttonhole placement, but honestly, I just usually default to my hem gauge and it kind of does the same thing. So don't need to overthink it. So we're gonna put some buttonhole on this keep in mind that on a shirt your buttonholes are vertical even though I have the pin in here horizontally that's just marking the starting point uh, there so vertical buttonholes down the shirt and then we will do one horizontal buttonhole on the neckband and then of course we'll put a couple buttonholes on our sleeve cuffs and then we'll hand sew those buttons
well, the finishing touch to any garment we know is the hem and how the hem turns out. Now on our shirt, we have a bit of a contoured edge to the bottom of the hem, which might look a little challenging, but we are utilizing the bias. And so there's a lot of stretch to this area. When you have an area that has bias and you're gonna have some sort of curve or contour, you want to use as narrow of a hem as possible. So we have a couple options here. The first one, which you occasionally see in shirt finishing would literally be just a surged edge and then you turn it under once and it's top stitched. And then the other one, which is a little more common, you see is just a narrow rolled hem. And we have encountered that several times in our wardrobe builder lessons. And all that is, is you're gonna turn the edge under once and then you'll turn it again and then you're gonna top stitch down as close to the folded edge as you can. And again, we wanna keep it very narrow and utilizing that bias of the garment, we should have no problem. So we're gonna tuck this under. If you want to press before you hem, you certainly could press it under once and then press it under again. And then you already know that it's molded and shaped to that contour. So whatever your level of comfort, and then you will have a wonderful shirt. I can't wait to see what you come up with in all of your finished garments. Well, thank you for joining me in this fun series of creating the classic tailored shirt. I've really had a great time sewing along with you and sharing with you the techniques and steps needed to create your own classic shirt, which really is a key a wardrobe item for anyone's wardrobe. After all, it's a classic shirt. By changing your fabric, you can make one more feminine, you can make it more masculine, more dressy, more casual with cotton fabric. So you be the designer and take these techniques and really make them your own. Well, coming up in Wardrobe Builder, we're gonna continue our series on the gentleman's wardrobe with another fun project. You'll have to check that out next month. Well, make sure you like and subscribe so that you are notified when those new videos come out. Uh, check out Nancy's Notions website for all the fabrics you see here, as well as many more in a great range of colors and get your copy of the gentleman's wardrobe book. Check out all the additional fun projects in there. You won't want to miss that. Well, thanks again, and we'll see you in another Wardrobe Builder.